from the last muskie of the fall to the very first tank you catch in the spring. Up in Canada, we have to deal with cold, long winters, and there's just no amount of bass fishing in the spring that's gonna get us excited like we are when muskie fishing starts. And that third Saturday in June, it's all about springtime. And today we're gonna break down the spring to summer transition. We're gonna break down six examples and we're gonna start right now. Hey everybody, Glenn McDonald with 54 Bus, and welcome back to another whiteboard edition of Breaking Down Shield Lakes. And as you can see, I got the little tykes easel out behind me here again. And I got three girls, so I have lots of stuff here for kids. And this was just really convenient for us. So all you guys that commented on that, I appreciate you guys. Well, today we're going to break down the spring to summer transition and for us we're talking from opener until midsummer. So we're looking at two distinct time periods. For us opener up here is the third Saturday in June and for us that's always pretty much always post spawn. The fish have already spawned out and you're going to get a lot of the males still up in the spawning areas and in most cases the big females have moved out. So we're going to break this down two ways. So what we would call spring would be from opener and the third Saturday in June until about the 4th or 7th of July. And after that period, we start to get into that mean summer period. And I didn't really pick that date at random. I think Steve Herbeck's actually kind of said that that 4th of July is where he thinks things start to transition over to summer patterns. So I take no credit on that. That's probably where I'd heard that, and that's probably why I'm repeating it. But that's how we break it down as well, because I think that's super valuable. So that's how we're going to break down our two areas today. We're going to look at the spring areas as opener up to about that 4th or 7th of July. And then after about the 7th of July, we're going to call summer peak until we get that first cold front in August. So we're looking... In most years, around August 10th to 15th is where we get the first real cold front. So because we got a bunch of examples, we're just going to kind of jump right into them and we're going to kind of break it down as we go. So what we're looking at here for our first example, this is a, an area we, we would be looking for in the spring. So this is north, up east west and south so in the spring we're looking for spawning bays and we're looking for spots that are, have protection from north and west winds so a bay like this with the mainland over here has protection from that northwest wind this bay is going to warm up because it's very shallow so we know that this weed won't grow up super quick in the spring, but there will be weeds in there. This is kind of sandy beach area. Got some boulders on the outside of the bay. So it's just a classic spawning area for muskies. So in the spring after opener, this is the type of area that we'll be looking for. So in the first example, Dave and I are out and we're probably about a week out from opener. And we're looking at a few of these points inside this bay this rock pile in the middle, and in the case of the video, we're looking at this rock pile on the outside. And what we're looking for is those fish that are starting to, to kind of migrate out of the spawning areas. And let's check out that video right now, and you'll see where we position the boat and what we're casting into kind of based on this map. So let's check that out. On a Snoop Dogg, Sam Smales, Dadson Custom. It just friggin' T bone this thing. And uh, we're about to see what it is. We had to cut the hooks out of it, it inhaled it so bad. Alright, here he comes. Okay, guys, so in that first example, you can see that 
Dave is using a bucktail. This isn't the exact one, but it's a Dadson. It's got a dangle blade, and I believe that one might actually add an extra blade on top. But it's a big Dadson, and we're actually we're targeting those drop-offs off of the edge of that spawning bay. Now, into our second example here. This is a continuation if you look at the satellite map of that spawning bay. So where Dave caught his was down in the bottom corner. This bay opens up to this island. And here we have a summer spot. And some of those fish that move out of those back bays will come out to these classic sandbars with reefs and rocks. And here again, north is up, south down, west and east. Here we do have some wind push that is gonna push these weeds around on this sandbar. And this is just a classic summer spot on the shield to find muskies on sand and weeds. And when you get northwest winds pushing in here, you're always going to have bait fish pushing up against here. And this spot has been really good for Hunter and I. And this is the type of spot that if you are up fishing shield lakes, you want to find sandbars that have grass and weeds and rocks and when you find that combination it can just be absolutely killer and in this example that we're going to show no surprise i'm using the dad sim blade with no name and we draw one out from way back in the weeds and this was like midsummer peak so these weeds were completely right to the surface in a lot of spots so you're trying to pick your avenues and your your kind of spots to cast inside there but let's go check out that video right now Okay, guys, coming back to another example here. So this spot here kind of breaks down as, again, if we're looking at the satellite image, it's one overall spot, and you have on the top of the satellite image, we have what we would think of as the spawning bay, and then down in the main basin, we would have that rock bar or sand bar that runs out would be the summer spot. So now looking at the whiteboard, the north bay of the satellite image. So this is, again, classic spawning area, protected from northwest winds, north winds, south-facing bay. This one's even better because it has two feeder creeks coming into it on either corner. And again, it has a sandbar and some rocks protecting the, the front of it. Just total classic spawning area. And when you have sandbars and beaches in the back, it can just be fantastic. So... In the next clip, you're going to see Kyla fishing with her sister, and they're coming into this bay knowing that just after opener, they're looking for some muskies that might still be back into the new growth of the weeds, most likely be males back in these back corners, but as they work themselves out, they're hoping to encounter a bigger female, maybe off of this sandbar, rock bar out on the front corner. In the example, they're kind of moving in here, and they're casting up, and whenever you get fresh water coming in mixing a sandbar and weeds together it's just going to be lights out and in this example kyla was throwing a bondi royal orba very easy to cast it's easy to retrieve and you don't have to work real hard with it i think kendra was using a small bucktail at the back and they were just trying to cover a lot of water to, to kind of encounter some active muskies. So let's check out that clip. And again, this is Kendra and Kyla, and they're fishing the backside of a south-facing spawning bay. Oh. 
foliage right here, remember? I see you better. All right, we're going to back up that first example of spring fishing, which was like maybe a week after opener with Kendra and Kyla. And again, on the satellite image, now we're down in the main basin and we're looking for fish that have moved out to main lake structure. And in our next example, on the satellite image, there's a mainland point that has submerged rocks and it's not really a sandbar, it's more of a, a gravel broken rock bar that runs out from shore. And then on the inside of it, we have a beach down at the bottom. Here we are getting north and west winds pushing in. So again, we're going to have bait fish pushing in here. And this is just a really classic spot that's breaking up part of that main basin. And we have a channel of the lake flowing in. Actually, in this case, it's flowing out across this point. So when we're coming to an area like this we're looking for fish that are going to be relating to this rock bar or relating to the slack water just on the inside outside of any lake current and if we have wind pushing in here we might be looking for fish sitting on the wind swept side looking for bait getting pushed in in this case it was fairly calm was it real windy we had moved around to this side and in the example we'll break down exactly where our boat was positioned and we actually drug this fish out from about six feet of water off of these big boulders close to shore and i was casting my old silver jailbird suic and let's check out that example and we'll show you exactly where we cast on the map Fish. Here, I'll come to the front, girls. Okay guys, we're back. We just re literally put that last fish back in the water and we moved over to another spot. And I had to change one of the hooks out on my suic. Dave's like, you better just change it just in case. So I swapped it out. Dave was just sharpening his hook and I first cast, literally just cast out from the boat, hit my lucky suic again. On the new hook. On the new hook, it hit right at the front of the bait. So we got another decent one in the bag here. Not as big as the last one, but still a pretty decent fish. <clears throat> okay guys, in those first four examples, both the spring and summer spots are very connected and it's easy to see the natural progression from spawning areas out to main basin. And these last two examples are just so easy to see it so looking at the satellite image you can see on the top side we have a beach with you can't see it on the image but there's a sandbar that runs off of it under the water and then just out to the south we have an island complex with sand and weeds now if we bring that over to the whiteboard here guys so this is how it breaks down so on the north side we have a sand beach that has new growth weeds in the spring and by midsummer these will be pretty thick and choked up in here we have a sandbar that runs out into the channel and because we have lake current pushing this way and we also have lake current coming around from below through these islands it's just an area where we have tons of lake current pulling through here plus we have uh, wind current that can be pushing in from the north or the west 
So this sandbar here in the spring can be really key because as fish are spawning in the south facing bay, you'll get some of the bigger fish and this is the easiest spot for them to start rolling out in the spring to get into slightly deeper water. And in this case, it's only 12 feet, but relative to the other area, the 12 feet is the deepest spot. So in the first example, Dave and I are out and we're about, again, we're about a week or a week and a half, maybe two weeks after opener. So maybe that very early part of July and we're looking for some of those fish that might have moved off this point. We did raise a bunch of fish and then as we moved in here, we encountered two or three fish in here. I lost one boat side and then we were able to pick one up on a long cast. And I was using, again, Big Shock, Dadson Blade with no name. And we were able to cover a lot of water in the weeds. Dave was running top water and a few different style of lures at the back, just trying to cover different avenues within the weeds. So let's check out that example and we'll come back and we'll kind of compare that to our midsummer area on the whiteboard. Since I'm going down the Milwaukee rabbit hole. Okay. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald, 54 bust, and Dave and I have been moving fish. Dave's got hit, had one on briefly. We've been moving a ton of fish and weeds. We're in a huge weed bed here, and we started just throwing blades. Dave's got a spinner bait. I got a Dadson with a dangle blade. Uh, this is one that Sam Dadson made for me. All right, so here's our last example of the six. So I caught that fish out in the spring or very early summer, post-spawn, out on this basically beach area. Now, in the summer, because of the lake current and because we have current pushing from around here, we get tons of weed growth because this is very oxygenated water shallow sand so we got six eight feet 12 feet got some nice areas in here where you get transition from shallow down to deep lots of weed growth get rocks around these islands it's just a key spot on this lake so we're here and it was probably just past summer peak but i wanted to use this example because these areas tie exactly together so you can see that fish that spawn in this north section just don't have to move very far and they can spend their whole summer around this island complex. And in the next example, I'm fishing with Matt and Ron Abel and Matt was using a perch colored shallow swimming dog. This is a not shallow one, but anyhow, it was this pattern, give or take. And we were working the outside edge of this weed line here, trying to meet kind of the lake current and that drop off down to 12 feet. So let's check out that example and we'll come back and we'll kind of wrap up a few things here. Hey guys, Glenn McDonald here with 54 Bus fishing with my buddies Ron and Matt Abel. We're up on Parrot Lake fishing out of Manitak Lodge and it's been a total tough day today. We got kind of post frontal conditions, but we are in the twitching hour. We got a little bit of a storm moving in after some clear conditions. Matt's got a small one come in in the weeds on a swimming dog and he's been running this thing for a few hours. It's not a real big one, but it's a good start for our evening and we are right in kind of the prime time. So I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit here with just trying to condense it into one thing. So all six examples, 
we get a spring fish and a summer fish in generally the same area. It's hard to show that on the whiteboard, but on the aerial photos, you can see that those fish don't have to move very far between spots like this one. They go from the north, and this is, that's maybe two football fields across there. It's not very far, and those fish will stay in that area all summer long. Again, if I'm just going to use this example, if you guys are coming up to Canada for your very first shield trip, regardless of the time of year, start looking at the aerial photos or aerial mapping of the lake you're staying at and try and pinpoint what you think looks like spawning areas. If you guys are coming up in late June, early July, look for these spawning areas that are south or, or east facing and work your way out from there. And like in this case, like I said, this first main point coming out from a spawning area is going to be key. And then look for your next closest area that fish might move out to. And it's not super hard to start breaking down these lakes when you start to use aerial um, satellite imaging because you can see what the shoreline might look like if it has sand. It's very distinctive. And then when you get an island or a main lake point or you start to see a reef close by, those are going to be your summer spots. So that would be the way that I would say to start breaking down that spring to summer transition. And once you get into that, for us, is usually around the 20th of July. If we have a full moon, that's kind of summer peak. The weeds are up as high as they're going to get. Water temps are probably going to be maxed out from that 20th of July to the first couple days of August. And if you're coming up in that time frame, key in on what looks like summer spots but just if you need help look back to where did those fish spawn or where did you think they spawn and then find your closest spot and then work your way out from there on the map rather than just kind of looking at a map and just randomly picking a spot you can actually kind of pinpoint it as you go and you're going to up your odds and just increase your chances of getting some muskies in the net I appreciate everybody watching, and this whiteboard series has been fun for us. Like I said in the last video, just going back and looking at our catches. Super cool. We've had a good time with it. And for some really cool musky action, check out this video right here. Another really great day on the water. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here, and we're going to catch you guys out on the water later.